the day one broadcast of the Hearthstone Thailand Major. We're here in the Panted Esports Arena in the beautiful city of Bangkok. I'm Mara and with me is Panther. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm really honored to be here actually. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually really happy that I got to meet the caster <laughs> down under. I've been watching your um, ANZ prelims, so. Yeah, we've been chugging away down there. We exist too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about Southeast Asia. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're in Southeast Asia, so I think no one's really forgetting about mm -hmm. about those guys. Uh, speaking of Down Under, actually, we're casting one of the players from down there, Edward Elric. Mm -hmm. Full Metal Alchemist fan. Yeah, must be, must be. For all you uh, weeaboos out there. <laughs> yeah, and um, actually, Edward Elric uh, placed second in the summer uh, ANZ prelims. Yeah, he did. Put a very good showing against the winner, Jowen. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, did go down in, in the grand finals twice. And he's actually up against Nook Style, and Nook Style is a new player. Well, uh, maybe he's new to the scene, not quite mm -hmm. sure, but he's a Thai local player. So let's see how he uh, matches up against uh, one of the known Edward Elrics from yeah. ANZ. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of having an open bracket he, like, with a massive amount of players in it. You know, anybody can sign up and, and, mm -hmm. and try their hand at becoming a professional player. You know, may maybe, who knows, maybe he is like a diamond in the rough and he makes it all the way <laughs> to the finals. That's Aladdin a dream, right? reference. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, actually this tournament had like half of the players in this tournament are Thai. Just mm -hmm. like in the Singapore majors, half of them were Singapore. Yeah. I mean, sure, if if there's a major in your country, why yeah. not join, right? No travel costs basically. And but yeah, you come come with a, a group of friends or whatever, you'll sign up, have a good time, even if you get knocked out, you know, hang around, watch the rest of the tournament, you know, even might even get to meet some of the yeah, it's free accommodation for them. They're in yeah. a nice, I think, it, like a nice hotel or it's a hostel. Hostel yeah. hostel, yeah. I saw their their little get up over there. It's really cute. I'm sure they're partying it up. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not just yet. There's still a tournament to do. Mm. So um, we know actually their lineups, and yeah, they all have seen each other's deck lists. Mm -hmm. Um, Edward Elric has brought the mage, and let's talk about his tempo mage. It's quite different. Yeah, he's running, um, well, the new card, Babbling Book. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been putting it in their in the Tempo Mage decks, but what's kind of weird is he's running double Loot Hoarder. And I was kind of, I saw this deck yesterday, and I was kind of trying it out on ladder and seeing why would he do this. And it's just a really nice turn two play. Like a lot of times you have Sorcerer's Apprentice and stuff like that, but you don't just want to throw it out naked on, on the board. You know, a lot of times it gets removed. You don't get the, the spell reduction uh, value. And also, this is one thing that I just kind of came up with myself, but you, you can try and throw your opponent off. If, if turn two, you throw out a loot hoarder, they're like, wait, is this, is this a freeze mage? Actually, that's actually right? really, oh my gosh. And he also has Acolyte, right? No, he doesn't have any Acolytes. Oh, none, no, okay. Because no. when I play against Tempo Mages and I see Acolyte, I, er I already think it's like, it could yeah. be freeze. Yeah, but the it. loot hoarder is like, for sure that's gonna yeah, mess right? people up. But I mean, they could see each other's deck lists, so. Yeah, that's that's the thing, like, <laughs> in a tournament like this, it doesn't matter too much. On ladder, I think you'll throw a lot off a lot of your opponents, especially if you have no turn one play, mm -hmm. like a Mono Worm or something. Yeah, I think it's it's a pretty smart little twist that uh, Edwards put on his, his deck here. Mm, don't forget the Barnes. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a Barnes in his Tempo Mage. So what do you think he's looking to get out of his Barnes? I mean, Flame Waker would be ideal, Yeah. Um, but also any, any type of spell damage uh, minions, uh, getting your blood mage would be mm -hmm. really nice. You know, get the spell damage plus the, the card draw on the death rattle. Like, even the loot hoarders would be great. Like, yeah. just get your draw out. Easy card another draw. draw. I think sometimes the like, tempo mage does kind of struggle with, with the card draw a little bit, especially after this flame maker turns where you throw out all your cheap spells and you like have one or two cards in left in your hand. If you can get, you know, pick up a loot hoarder or something like that, you know, it cycles through a little bit faster. Definitely. And, you know, they both brought aggro shaman. Mm. And both of them brought zoos, except Edward Elric has the discard zoo, which uh, we see a lot of now because of the new Karazhan cards. Um, mm -hmm. There's Malkazar's Imp. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Silverware Golem. Yeah. And it just synergizes really well with the Doom Guards. Like, um, and uh, yeah, because the Imp, when you discard a card, the Imp gives you another one back. Yeah, yeah, so it really speeds up the the deck a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it makes it almost like into a slight aggro. Mm -hmm. What uh, do you variant. think is actually better? The normal zoo or the discard zoo? Oh man, um, I think if the discard zoo gets their their cards cycling, I think um, they just kind of race ahead and, mm -hmm. and the, the traditional zoo can't keep up. But I mean, it does come down to, to the draws and, and the curve in the match. I mean, 
the traditional zoo is is very quick as well to take the board advantage. I mean, the the zoo mirror has always been kind of determined by by turn four what the board looks like, because um, you don't have that advantage where if uh, if you are zoo against another class, you get that double draw every turn. Like you, go, you bo both guys get to draw two cards a turn, so can't really leverage that very much. Right, and. Uh, the soul fire is really great in the discards zoo, yeah. like to, for taking out like imp gang bosses. But if the the normal zoo gets like a ritual, a, z a discard zoo can't really deal with all those minions. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. I mean, like yeah, the D Darkshire Councilman. If you get those big as well, it's it's pretty hard for mm -hmm. for a discard zoo to, to deal with that. that the five health is is quite hard to just tear through. And both of them actually brought. Um, Cthulhu's also for their yep. warriors, um, but Edward has the uh, Cycle Cthulhu, which yep. we saw Kalento playing a lot, but it wasn't actually Kalento's deck. It was like an Asian player. I don't even know who, who what his name is, but it was actually his deck. And yeah, by Cycle we mean the the commanding shout, pyromancer, acolyte of pain kind of combo. It's ridiculous. Like I've, I've seen people chew through uh, arcane giants and stuff with with the. With, uh, the pyromancer, right? Because it just never dies, and he just keep pl playing, keeps playing like really cheap spells, and it's just nice. It's a nice um, way for the Cthulhu warrior to gain more cards because sometimes, yeah. like, you don't have your Cthulhu cards yet, mm -hmm. and then with that cycle, it's like you're guaranteed to get your yeah. When when cards. Whispers of the Old Gods came out, like the Cthulhu warriors that people were building, the problem it had was was the card draw. They were only pretty much relying on. Acolytes of Pain and uh, Battle Fury, and sometimes if you just don't have those cards, especially if you don't have, you know, the one damage activators for the acolytes and stuff, it's, just, it's really hard to cycle yeah. through your deck, get to those Cthulhu cards. There's a lot of times you just wouldn't draw any anything that would empower your Cthulhu, and this really kind of solves that puzzle a little bit. It really speeds up the deck a lot more. I know. I, it's, just, it's such a great combination: Pyromancer with Commanding Shout. Like, why wasn't that a thing before? There must there right? is actually a Those reason. cards have been in yeah. in the game for so long, people just didn't make the connection. Uh, it must be Icker. Yeah. Maybe. It's just like Ghoul, Ravaging Ghoul, and Icker were just like those extra cards that it needed. Yeah, sure. I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Helps clear the board also. Yeah. So is there any... Th um, I did see that Nook Style's Aggro Shaman reminds me of Hot Meows, actually. Yeah, how so? Um, it, just running the same cards. Like I don't even know if Hot Meowth owns that deck, but um, I think he was one of the first players to put Maelstrom Portal in the Aggro Shaman, right? And then Sottle okay. was like, guys, Maelstrom Portal is actually good. Yeah, those, those one <laughs> drops being added is, is pretty good for an aggro deck. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure like it's getting it's becoming a standard aggro shaman card, the Maelstrom Portal. Yeah, I mean, it's just... You're, you're versing a lot of zoos as well, like a lot of one one health uh, minions, and it, it puts that threat against uh, the Yogg token druids as well. They have to buff up their their tokens if they're gonna start making those, because you're, you're just afraid of a maelstrom portal just shredding them all. You know, if, if they if they stay at one one, um, I think the, the the knowledge of that card existing is is a big big factor as well. Right. Uh, yeah. And of course, next up also brought his token droid. But yeah, so here are the event schedules. Yeah, we're still in the round of 128 at the moment. After this, we will be moving on to the next round. Um, yeah, the bracket should be move, moving along pretty smoothly here. They haven't got their bans up, but I have a feeling that both players are going to be banning each other's warriors. It's just like the go-to. Yeah, that, that's been the trend. Because yeah. Warrior also just has so many archetypes. They're all so strong. They're also solid against mm -hmm. so many so many other decks. It's just uh, if you leave it up, you're, you're bound to have a hard time, you know? Yeah, and I just think that um, the Zoos have a hard time against the Cthulhu Warriors. So I'm, I think that's a good yeah. strategy to ban the, the Warrior. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Fire War Axe. And then you've also got things like Disciple of Cthulhu. But they just ping away some of the smaller health minions. Do you actually know the prize pool for the tournament? Yeah, I believe... The overall prize pool is five thousand dollars. First place go, uh, goes home with two thousand five hundred. Second place with one thousand. Third and fourth place go home with five hundred each. And then fifth to eighth place get one hundred and twenty-five dollars. This is all in U.S. dollars, so the local Thai players should be pretty happy. That exchange rate is pretty sweet. 
<laughs> it's actually, they also get HCT points, but of course, since we are at the last call area, um, actually only two players in the tournament are eligible to mm -hmm. make it to the top eight, right? For the yeah, last I think call. TJ and D2 mentioned it earlier. Mm. Yeah, and um, actually there's one girl in this tournament, yeah. Chani. Chani. And she actually got, she was the, uh, there was a poll of which player should um, get a free flight to this um, event, and she actually won it. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I think a lot of people are actually on, on Twitch chat rooting for her right now because she's the only girl. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on her as, as the day progresses here. Um, I believe a lot of the, the first round results should be coming in pretty soon while this is happening as well. So if you guys uh, in Twitch chat are curious, I, I believe... Uh, you can, get ex you can go excl exclamation mark bracket in the chat and uh, it should get linked to that if you want to come check that out. You know, follow your favorite players. Maybe some of your friends are playing even. Yeah, I was, oh my gosh, I'm just so overwhelmed by all the good players that have flown into this event and I actually get, we get to meet them. Yeah. I've, some of them I've already met from the last major, the Singapore one. And um, I was just so happy when Pimping Ho came. <laughs> I was like, wow, I actually get to meet Pimping Ho. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I've always noticed, like, whenever I meet people that I've only ever seen on a screen, when I meet them in real person, I'm like, wow, you're, you look so 3D. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds strange, but that was the first thing I thought when I met uh, D2 and uh, TJ back there. And also, back in the day, like, my first kind of uh, eSports crush was uh, Artosis and Tasteless from the, the StarCraft 2 casters. That's right, you came from StarCraft. Yeah. First time I got to meet them, I just, I just went full fanboy. I couldn't really speak. I was like, ah, hi, guys. <laughs> And so that's Edward Elric that you see in the camera. This is the first time I'm seeing him. And he's actually Chinese, but he's is he born and raised in Australia? I believe that's Edward, actually. Oh, yeah. okay. So I guess they did. They I was like, wow, he's, <laughs> he's gained a little, little bit of weight. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he lives in Australia. I, I believe his nationality is Chinese, though. He's okay. competed uh, in multiple seasons of the ANZ preliminaries. Trying to qu he qualified for the, the APAC finals. So and uh, I believe he actually lost to uh, Handsome Guy. Oh, Handsome Guy. He's actually number one right now yeah. in the uh, Asia. Yeah, ba down in uh, Australia and New Zealand, we actually kind of have a grudge against the Koreans because every time <laughs> one of our guys goes to APAC, a Korean player eliminates them. We're like, Ugh. Damn, those Koreans. They're just too good at games. Yeah, it happens in every esports. Like, e e any time an Australian goes out of Australia and competes overseas, a Korean, whether it be in StarCraft or... You know, any other game, it's just the Koreans just crushing our dreams. So we're going to go right into game number one, Nook Style versus Edward Elric. And we can see that Nook Style has his Shaman yep. and Edward has his Discard Zoo. So we didn't actually get to see what classes they've banned yet, but we will definitely see them later. Yeah, for sure. That Soulfire is actually pretty good to have in your opening hand because you can get rid of things like the totem golem which is so hard to, to chew through in, in early stage of the game. Okay, so we have just um, been been told that they both banned warrior. I was yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, it was, I think, the only option here. Yeah. Nice little start with the, with the tunnel trog. Exactly, because like Nuxal did not have the coin, so it's not like he could have like coined mm -hmm. totem golem, so... Trog on turn one is great. Yeah. I mean, the zoo decks, these have so many one drops. You're pretty much guaranteed to have one in your opening hand, <laughs> even before you mulligan. Well, the Flame Imp uh, does really nicely. It contests well with the Tunnel Trog. And yeah. Edward El Elric is actually going to go ahead and coin out Looks the like the Voidwalker. Yep, to make yeah. sure that, to protect his Flame Imp in yeah. case he of a uh, Rock Biter. That's exactly right. And, and it might pay off here, but with that Flame Tongue, possibility he might be able to chew through that but then again the flame t uh, the flame imp will take care of that so he does need to take that into consideration I think it's still worth putting down you know um, yeah getting rid of this I mean it doesn't kill your trog so mm -hmm. and there's still two threats on the board versus that one flame imp yeah and you have the opportunity to grow the trog in the future as well not as it's probably gonna stay alive I mean unless Edward decides to use his uh, soul fire, but I really doubt that. Yeah, Edward Elric has won cards for days. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just, I think like something like 
the zoos these days have like half of their cards, if, if uh, just slightly less, half of their cards in their deck are, are one drops. That's true. There's a lot of one drops in the discard zoo. So next I was actually thinking about lightning storming this because it's a great board to lightning storm. Yeah, a lot but of But then value. it means he can't put down his um, flame wreath faceless on turn four, which yeah. could, it's, it's fine. It's a good trade off for taking away mm -hmm. Edward's whole board. Yeah, he's just going to go for it. Because, I mean, like, next turn is turn three. If an imp, imp gang boss gets thrown out, like, you don't want to have uh, that lightning storm in your hand, like, kind of stuck. And that's not really the best turn for Edward Elric, but uh, at least he can uh, put down the possessed villager to contest nicely with the trog. Mm -hmm. How do you find this matchup for you, um, Agro Shaman versus the zoo? Um, well, if if the shaman gets nice value out of their their AOE spells, like like he like uh, Nook just did, it, it does tend to swing in their favor. But yeah, I totally agree. I feel like with people adding in um, Maelstrom Portal yep. and Lightning Storm, mm -hmm. I feel like Agro Shaman is better. Does really well against Sue now. Yeah, it definitely the has the definitely has the potential. Mm, not the greatest draw there. Yeah, he's actually thinking about soul firing now. Soul yeah. firing the other truck. And he's gonna just tap here, yeah. Oh, that's got the silverware silverware golem. But too bad he couldn't discard that or it wasn't in his hand earlier. Yeah. And he's already down to seventeen health and the flame wreathed faceless the flame wreathed faceless gets <laughs> thrown out at seven damage per swing and without any Imminent taunts ready to go for Edward. He's looking uh, in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, Oof. so he's kind of realized that I can't deal with this. No. Yeah, he didn't have. Not. Had a great start, but mm -hmm. then because of that clear, yeah. it was just disastrous for him. Perfect timing for uh, for Nook style there. And looks like he takes a 1 0 lead over the Australian challenger. So um, I think usually the with he's just going to stick to his. Um, the deck that he would just use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of times people tend like the reason behind why people do that in tournaments is that they want to hide their deck deck information. But because the deck lists <laughs> have been made public, I I don't know if that is really on his mind. And he I mean he can always switch around if he wants to if if he has an idea of maybe what Nook is gonna play next. Because right. a lot of times, as you said, like a lot of people do assume that the losing player sticks with their deck. So you can kind of mind game your opponent and you know bait them into playing something uh, something that's not good against one of your other decks, and you play right. that. And you, maybe you can counter it, but I mean, and looking at the rest of the rest of the decks that Nook is playing, Druid and Warlock, like I, I don't think uh, either of the decks have a particularly bad matchup. Right. I do really want to see Edward Eller's Tempo Mage already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually super fun to play. The babbling books are just really cool to play on turn one. To, uh, I keep getting Pyroblasts, though, on turn one, <laughs> and I just have them in my hand for a good nine turns. They do come in handy, though, to finish your opponent, but I he was kind of hoping for something have, cheaper. He actually doesn't even run the uh, Firelands Portal. No, no, he Tempo doesn't. Mage, yeah. Which is a great card, though, for Temple mm, Mage. Yeah. But yeah, he's got a different strategy. Yeah, his curve is super low. I think he just wants to finish the game, like, super, super quick. Yeah, I mean, um, that's just, like, a big... Tempo Mage has like Babbling Book, that's like a go-to. Some people use Babbling Book, some people don't. Some people use Firelands Portal, mm -hmm. some people don't. Some people like the Tome. The Kabbalist Tome, yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. I mean, three Mage spells is, is guaranteed to be good. And a lot of times you have the Sorcerer's uh, Apprentice ready to go, so all those spells are much cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roof Trellin is actually a fan of the Tome. Yeah. Like we saw him play that in the prelims, but Sottle was actually saying like he actually hates Tome. Because it's like, oh. why? It's like, you kind of like waste the whole turn just like drawing like an extra three. Sure, yeah. And it's also a little bit un uh, unpredictable what yeah. you get. Sometimes you get just like a Frost Nova, a Spellbender, and something else. And you're kind of like, ah, I don't really want these. Like, <laughs> right. I wish I hadn't spent that five mana. <laughs> it's, it's really expensive, right? Yeah. For I three spells. I mean, it's, it's a good value. I mean, like if you and your opponent are top decking, and then you have Tome, it's great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think also, like, one thing about the unpredictability, it it's kind of sucks for the person getting the cards, but it actually, it's really confusing for, for your opponent because they have no idea what those cards could be. So usually, you know, when 
especially when you know your opponent's deckless, you can play around your opponent's threats, your opponent's removal, but when they suddenly have three extra cards that you don't know what they are, like exactly. you just have a really hard time playing around them. And the secrets, especially when Yogg puts up like Ugh. a ton of secrets, you're like, how do I play around this? Yeah, your opponent just has like a Paladin secret, a Hunter secret, and a Mage secret, and you're like, what? How do I play around all of this? Because you have to just think through all the secrets right. from all three classes. It's uh, it's a big puzzle to solve. Yeah. What do you What do you think about Yogg? Do you hate him? Do you love him? Um. <laughs> it's so f it's it's love and hate for me. Like if it if I'm playing it and he does good things for me, I'm like yes, I love Yogg. <laughs> I, I hope he never like gets re gets removed from the game. And then when um, my opponent uses it against me and I lose, I'm like right. this card is needs to get removed. <laughs> game number two, and this time we're gonna see Zoo versus Zoo. Um, Nook Styles, normal Zoo against Edward's discard Zoo. So yeah, Edward Edward Elric decided to stick with his discard Zoo. Yep. And as you can see, the the wand drops are scattered all amongst these hands. Right, and I find that this match is going to be very interesting. Like, which Zoo will take it? Yeah. It's going to be the clash of the, the classic versus the newer generation. What do you think? Do you think it's uh, called discard zoo or discard lock? <laughs> uh, discard zoo lock. Because I feel like <laughs> zoo. I feel like zoo fills the board, right? Yeah. And then a discard zoo doesn't really fill the board. I mean, like if you look at the silverware golem, you discard him, Delighted. and then he floods the board. Right. That's actually true. But then there's no ritual, right? Yeah. True. True. Double Argent Squire, oh, turn one. Yeah, they're so hard to get rid of. It's uh, yeah, quite it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you almost want to throw out the Voidwalker, but then you're like playing off curve as well. Right. But um, yeah, he doesn't know that Nookstyle actually has the the Dire Wolf, which could oh, help a lot. That's gonna hurt. Oh, two Dire Wolves now. Yeah, so he's mm. just gonna use the. Most likely just going to use a dire wolf here. And one of his squires are actually going to die. Yeah, nice foresight there by Elric to, you know, get rid of one of the divine divine shields. Just because Zeus have so many things to mm -hmm. buff. Yeah, and sometimes with Hearthstone, it's not about playing on curve. Sometimes it's just getting value out of your cards. Yeah, when I was like first learning the game, my friends were always like, just play on curve, man, and you'll <laughs> do well. Just do it. Just stick to the curve. And then... I Later on, I figured out you have to play around your opponent's stuff as well. I'm like, oh, this game's so confusing. <laughs> right. But I'm getting I, the hang of it. <laughs> I remember when people used to play Arcane Missiles on turn yeah. one as, oh. as, as Mage. <laughs> like, that's the funniest. Yeah, just get that three damage into your face. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Three damage, turn one. So Nook's style is... Um, he, does he really want to hit into this? Uh... Mm. I mean, I just think thinking, what can Edward really do to get rid of that, to punish him for not swinging in with that? Oh, okay, I see now. He's thinking about his turn ahead. So if he trades in his Argent Squire right now, he can Dark Iron Dwarf his Imka, Imka oh, boss yeah. and then trade into the, mm -hmm. the Councilman later. But if he draws another two-drop... But then I guess it's kind of obvious, right? If he did yeah, that, yeah. it's like, okay, my opponent knows what I have. Right. Ah, uh, the Dark Peddler. He's going to see what he can get here. It's always like, you know when you have the option to tap or Dark Peddler? Normally you see people use the Dark Peddler first, just yeah. to see what they get. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and he actually got the trade into the Imp Gang boss before the Imp Gang boss could take out the Councilman. It's ruined Nook Style's plan. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, the Imp back the ink, the ink. <laughs> Sorry. It's the okay. councilman is definitely going to get removed here. Um, he really does not want to let, let that live. Although, that wolf is looking like a pretty juicy target as well now. Actually, he's thinking about, yeah, power overwhelming okay. and killing the, yeah, and putting his possessed villager down. And he has to take out this wolf right now. This yep. makes him have a board. Versus the, yeah, and Edward is just left with the one minion right now. Ooh, actually, this is great. Yep. He can now soul fire something and hope to get the silverware golem. Is he going to do it? Do Whoa. the wolf. 
hit the wolf. Nookstyles looked a little disappointed there. Oh. oh, because he got rid of the power overwhelming. Oh, oh. no. Well, okay, well, at least his peddler trades nicely with the possessed villager. Yeah, and because of the imp, you know, he, he gets to draw a card when he discards. It's, it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. So here, like I was saying earlier, with the ri forbidden ritual, it's going to be hard for the discard zoo to deal with all these tiny little 1-1 one -one tokens. And Nookstyle is actually preparing for the sea giant. Oh, yeah. Like. He draws that on off the top there. Whoa. Ooh, this is great. He can actually put out his whole board. Oh, and Nookstyle doesn't like the look of that. <laughs> See, the discard zoo can do dirty things. Yeah, that synergy is <laughs> feels pretty dirty. Mm -hmm. Looks like just really not looking happy there in, in, his, uh, in his player camera. Well, Edward lo looking pretty content there. He's like, yeah, I got this. Come on. <laughs> he actually he can play his sea giant. Or yeah, he's going to, which he's going to drop down. But yeah, I c you saw that Edward Elric went he rather trade than deal two damage to the face. Mm -hmm. He just wants to get rid of Nook Style's board, and I'm sure yeah. Edward knows that he runs a Sea Giant. When you have the numbers advantage on board, you just constantly want to be trading. And uh, now Nook Style's board is just, it's super tall in that one minion, but the problem when you have one big minion against, you know, a widespread board like Elric's, it's just, you can only get, you can only swing once with the 8-8, eight eight, so it feels bad when, when you swing with the 8-8 eight eight to kill a 1-3, that's down mm -hmm. to 2 health, you're like, ah. Yeah, this is looking really good for Edward Elric. I'm not sure how Nook Style can even come back from this. It's just really hard. Well, now Edward has to deal with the Sea Giant. Because the, the taunt was there earlier, but now that the taunt is down, Nook Style can deal 8 damage mm. to Ed Edward's face. But how much damage does Edward have right now on the board? It's got 11. 11. He can he can bring that up to twelve with the defender of Argus. I think he's still tap here and see what he could get. Or actually, he's thinking about yeah dealing with these councilmen's right now before they get any bigger. And have set oh another two taunts. Oh, this sea giant is gonna have a hard time getting through this. Yeah. I don't even think he trades into the sea giant. He has to just ignore it at this point. Yeah, just prevent the. The councilman's from growing, and then you know these, these mini taunts are just gonna keep blocking that sea giant. Yeah, it's looking pretty very very bad for Nuxtel. What could save him? Hmm. Another ritual possibly could help. Yeah, it might be a little too late though, because next turn the damage is that's gonna be true. pretty big. I think that's gonna be it. Ah, knife juggler, unfortunately, not gonna be enough here. Yeah, it's actually Edward has um, lethal. Yeah, there we go. And looks like the series is tied up 1-1 one, one mm -hmm. here. It's pretty close. Um, mm -hmm. Could go any direction. Edward looking pretty satisfied with that game. Yeah. So guys, Discard Zoo has a chance against normal Zoo. <laughs> yeah, it does for sure. <laughs> Especially when you get those big uh, discard synergies happening. Like the board just fills up so quick and you're drawing all those cards as well. So you don't have to be tapping to, to refill your hand. I feel like... If the discard zoo gets the silverware golem, like to get discarded, yeah, it's like I think they're probably gonna win. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> Especially much. Especially when they get two, both of their silverware golems discarded, mm. it's pretty disgusting. Off like a doom guard. That's just ultimate synergy. Like yeah, this. it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. I mean, a lot of times you you just never play the silverware golem unless you have no other choice or right. unless you you know you're gonna discard it. Mm -hmm. So there's a pretty high percentage chance that you're gonna end up discarding it, you know. Oh, I've had like I remember the first couple of times I tried uh, discard Zoo, I had really bad luck with it, <laughs> and uh, I never got to discard my Silverware Gold. Ah. But eventually, yeah, I got to. Yeah, as you get used to the play style, and, stuff. and it's a great feeling. Yeah, I discarded my Silverware Gold. Anything that's free feels great. <laughs> <laughs> free. Oh. So what do you think we're gonna see? Uh, coming up next. So Nookstout was on his Warlock. He does have his Druid left, but he's probably going to stick with the deck that he's already played with. Editor, on the other hand, has the Mage and his Shaman. The shaman is the Aggro Variant, while his Mage is a Tempo deck. And Against you say Warlock. Shaman, right? Not Shaman. Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> but 
No, so Australians it's, it's do not. It's shaman, no? Yeah, like, Australians do not say shaman. Like, is there a nationality that specifically says shaman? Yeah, UK people. In the UK? Really? <laughs> That's strange. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Twitch chat gonna give. Um, Twitch chat loves to give uh, people who say shaman um, a hard time. Yeah, because it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, technically, both are correct. Yeah. It's just eh, I mean, accents. The English are the guys who invented English, so technically they're right, but <laughs> strength in numbers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, what are you looking forward to? Uh, what players do you think um, are going to do well in this tournament? Oh, I'm, I'm cheering on, on my boy Edward here. <laughs> like, Actually, yeah, he's one yeah. of your... Uh, we, were, we had this little draft with all the casters here, mm -hmm. um, and you picked Edward. Who was your other one? <laughs> I picked the, the Taiwanese player whose name I don't know how to pronounce, because it's all in, uh, in Chinese characters, but I looked at his decks, so I was like, yeah, this guy looks interesting. Mm. Solid came, decks, good yeah, lineup. Came all the way from Taiwan, so I must be feeling pretty confident, yeah. <laughs> I drafted um, Waning Moon and uh, Gigi Leo. Right. I was like, come on. Because um, TJ picked Neilio, so I couldn't pick him. Oh. And I think uh, TJ's other pick was Aaron. Yep. I forgot D2's picks. We'll have to ask him later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably G. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not. No, no, no. He picked. Two Taiwan players. Oh, okay. If I remember correctly. Putting his faith in, in the Taiwanese players here. Game number three is ready. And yes, Edward Elric's weird tempo mage that yeah. has the loot hoarder and the barns. I mean, having casted a bunch of Elric in the past, he does tend to run these standard decks with a slight twist on them. Mm -hmm. Like little things that he he, hims, he just likes to, to throw in there to... Sometimes it's to throw off his opponent. Sometimes he legitimately thinks it's just better than what other people are running. But uh, he always makes it work. That's the thing that counts, you know? Mm -hmm. And Nook style with his token druid. What do you think about his uh, token druid? Any any good cards like that you've noticed in there? Um, well, I mean, he's obviously got the arcane giants in there, new addition with uh, this this new expansion. Super, super useful card in, uh, in this deck archetype because you're playing so many spells. A lot of times you're playing like one, two, three mana. 8-8. Eight, eight. It feels pretty good. Right. It's just like a better sea giant. I agree. I love the arcane uh, giants. Sometimes I even see them in Temple Mage. Sometimes. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, it could be possible. Ooh, Ooh babbling. the babbling book. It's always interesting to see what spell are you going to get out of the babbling book. Yeah. It looks like it's just going to stick to the curve here. Throw mm -hmm. out that, that loot hoarder. It was great. Nookstyle picked up his Wild Growth, which Druids love on their turn two. Yeah, and then and Meyer Keeper. The <laughs> ramp is real right now. Right. That's the perfect start for a Druid. Yeah. And he could actually, like, even Emperor Thorson. Cool. That's pretty... <laughs> it's supposed to be his, his three mana mm. turn. He's already he's doubled the mana. He's probably going to um, drop the Sorcerers, uh, drop the... Uh, draw with the... Arcane Intellect, yeah. and then po possibly even put up the Mirror Image. Oh, sees what he gets okay. from the Loot Hoarder first here. That's true. I like that play. Okay. Uh, yep, and so he chooses not to put down the... Oh, okay. Mirror Image is out. Grow the Mana Worm. Yeah, and it, it just puts two, two small taunt bodies in between his opponent's uh, attacks, something like uh, Feral Rage, you know, I mean, he, he could have used that. Right, and as a druid, you don't like to keep up the mana, uh, keep the mana worm and the sorcerer's apprentice on the board. He's actually oh, no. thinking to draw one with wrath and swipe the mm. mana worm. That's okay. a possible thing to do here. Mm, yeah. That's a lot of like premium removal that you're yeah. spending on just two minions. Or just drop the, I guess, the em or drop the Emperor Thorson and just deal with it later yeah. after all the spells are cheap. I really like uh, Edward's, uh, Edward Elric's position right now because he's got a nice board presence and then he's got so much cycle in his hand. Right. And also, I mean, discover, I suppose, but he also has some cycle with the, the arcane intellect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I said earlier, he just doesn't want to leave up the Sorcerer's Apprentice and the Mana Worm. We know how, how big a Mana Worm could grow yeah. and 
with with that many like with the sorcerer's apprentice up, it's gonna make the spells just too cheap. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why this temp, uh, this mage deck is called tempo mage. You know, if you let it get even slightly ahead, just just races ahead, and just next thing you know, you have a eight three mono worm plus a bunch of spell damage coming to your face. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be a quite a long game because uh, druid games tend to be kind of long, anyways. Yeah. And then the te this tempo mage has the tome, the Kabbalist, Kabbalist mm. tome, and that usually means like that it's going to be a long game. <laughs> sure. A slowly chip away, take down these mirror images so he can actually get to the face. Just play on curve here and um, always dealing with each other's minions. Mm -hmm. We know how crazy both sides can grow their board. Right, yeah. Well, looks like he's contemplating Emperor Thorsane here. Right, I totally agree with that. I feel like he shouldn't play Yogg anytime soon. He's going to keep that no. and just keep <laughs> feeding the Yogg. Cheapen his spells. Raven Idol is going to be free and it's going to be really nice with the Fandral later on. Yeah, it's so great getting to discover minion and a spell. I'm just really excited to see what comes out of Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really cool if it was a. Uh oh, speaking of which, Flame Waker. Yeah, this is actually really good. The first Flame Waker out sees what he draws first. Yeah. So he's good. Mm, actually, he good could. Play there. This is great. He's probably thinking about... Yeah, he could clear that. I mean, so he's seen a Wrath and a Swipe already. What are the chances he has a Swipe in his hand or, or a Wrath? So that Flame Waker could be pretty safe. But it looks like he's going to go just go with the, the Azure Drake mm -hmm. there. A little beefier. Yeah. Right now it's just like, I'm going to deal with your minions. You're going to deal with mine. Yeah. And uh, let's see what happens from here. Oh, this is a really dirty. Fandral with the Nourish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter too much. I mean, next turn it is uh, 10 mana anyways, but he does get the mana crystals, I suppose. I'd totally do it. Fandral yeah. is Norish. You could get the, yeah, the, he can, he can the other Wrath, and then the Raven Idol, could you mm. could even get another Wrath. It's always good when uh, your Fandral can get a lot of value. Yeah. Have you played a lot of um, Druid? Yeah, actually, I was a uh, I was fanboying this deck before it kind of hit the tournament scene because I think I saw it on Value Town and some people were like just talking about it and just kind of joking about it, being like, "Nah, this deck's not gonna be good. <laughs> it has Yogg in it. Are you kidding me? It's so it's too random." And then you know, a few weeks later, everybody was playing it in tournaments, and I was like, "Damn!" Mm. I was full uh, going hipster. I was like, "I liked it before it was cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like to be one of the first ones to yeah. know a deck that's really <laughs> good. I remember, I, I, f I think I was one of the first ones to know that Dragon Warrior was like an amazing yeah. deck. Yeah, so long ago already. I've been playing it, I think, for four months or something. Wow. <laughs> or three, uh, something like that. Okay, so he's gonna, he has to take out this Fandral before it does any more work. <laughs> we don't want to see a 10-10 Ancient of oh War. Oh my god, that Black Knight? Oh, it's so good <laughs> against Ancient of War. I haven't seen that card in a in a while, but it's gonna come in handy. You got for that from sure. Mulch, right? Yeah. Oh. oh. Did you see? Did you see Edward Elric's face? He's like, mm. mini fist bump. Got right it. There. <laughs> and oh. let's let's just watch Nook Style's face right now. See how he reacts to the Black Knight. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> That is nuts. That is just oh. the perfect mulch for him. Yep. I mean, like, otherwise, uh, Edward Elric would have had to s spend a lot of spells yeah. dealing with that Ancient of War. So but hard to break through. Here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So, okay, oh for God. Edward, his Flame Waker has to do a lot of work now. Mm -hmm. A ton of work. Especially considering Nook Nook's Styles has a, a Savage Roar in hand. That's so much burst damage next turn if this board does not shrink. <laughs> Actually, I want to talk about the uh, the Druid again. Mm -hmm. There's so many types of like token Druids. Like there's some with Malagos, 
with, yeah. with the moon fires. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Um, and I know that there's some druids without teachers, and then they play Double War, Ancient of War, yeah. and Moonglade Portals. What do you think about Moonglade Portals? Have you tried them? I haven't tried it too extensively, but I've, I've been hearing good things about it from, from people who have mm -hmm. been playing it. I mean, six mana minions are pretty damn good overall. Yeah, there's actually, I think there's only two that are just actually bad. Mm. Like Moat Lurker. I forgot <laughs> the other one. Yeah, when I, I got Moat Lurker one time and I was like, I think this card was made to make Moonglade Portal not so OP. <laughs> <laughs> And we can see that Edward Elric has these spells to deal with this. So his Flame Waker is going to go ahead and do a lot of work. Yeah. That but dragon the egg. egg is kind of annoying, actually. I know. But his arcane missiles are just really cheap right now. Yeah. That's great. He's going to be able to fire off all these and potentially clear the whole board, actually. Oh, then another dragon. So Nookstyle's not really happy with this. He's not even looking at the screen right now. He doesn't want to He doesn't want to see <laughs> anything. But he does have the Yogg waiting. But how many... I didn't really c count. At least he's he's made at least like eight spells. At yeah. This, right. More or less. I think the the sweet spot is seven spells. Once you've played seven spells, you have a fifty one percent chance mm -hmm. of clearing your opponent's board. And it's always nice to play Yogg when your opponent has minions. Mm. I don't really like dropping Yogg when there's nothing out on the board. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not so great. It's it's more of a, a comeback tool than than it is when you're ahead or when it's even. Would you play Yogg on this turn if you were Nook style? I mean, what else can he really do, right? Mm. It's not the the power of the world. It's not going to do anything here. Here we go. <laughs> Let's get your popcorns ready, guys. Mm, not bad. Pretty decent start here. Cleave. Mm. Kills one minion with the cleave. It'd be nice Another to be able to walker. see what that secret is, actually. Oh, All of spiders. That's good. Execute. Oh, it's oh. execute on the Flame Waker. Yeah, this is going really oh. well. Full board clear Clears here. Clears the whole board. This is nuts. Oh, oh man. my gosh. He's got a portal. Oh, he's actually just, he just keeps on summoning minions. Wow, what a turnaround. That was insane. And this oh. is why people play Yogg, guys. <laughs> that is a nice board also to use um, Savage Roar and Power of yep. the Wild. That's just a ton of damage. Now um, Edward needs oh. to... Oh, actually, that's pretty much it, <laughs> isn't it? It very much is. And this is exactly why Yogg is. Sometimes people hate him, and sometimes people love him. Mm. Edward's just hoping that there's no power of the wild here. That was just a crazy turn of events. I mean, we just saw Nook style looking really disappointed. Yeah, and right. And then now he's like in a very comfortable position. Just a roller coaster of emotions here for both players, and there we go. The savage roar gets thrown out. Yep, that's going to be enough damage, and yeah. he's got a ton. <laughs> Let's just go for the BM. Show show how much damage you have. Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> I, th I think crazy. it was more like Nook didn't want to count. He's like, I'm just, just to make sure I'm gonna throw out all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is enough. Yeah. And here we go. I'm pretty sure that's lethal. Oh man, my boy Edward Nailed Elric it. is down. Um, he, he can. He only has one more, one more life. Oh, he's just chuckling. Over <laughs> like, yes, thank you, Yogg. Praise Yogg. Well done. And now uh, Nook Styles is just down to his his traditional zoo deck here. And uh, Edward right. has to try and make a comeback with his Tempo Mage and his Aggro Shaman. Still doable, very doable. But uh, it does. There's like a psychological thing there where when you're down to your last life and you're like, oh, I have to make. I have to make this count. If I lose here, I go down to the, to the lower bracket, and that's just a lot more games you have to play throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot more like, exhaustion in general. Anything can happen, though. Like, I've seen people who, um, like, just need one more deck to win with, but yeah. then all of a sudden, like, their opponent just, like, sweeps them. Like a yeah. A, a, they call it a backward sweep. A reverse sweep, Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> reverse <laughs> sweep. <laughs> Still learning. Don't sap me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens all the time in Hearthstone, where... People are literally up like 2-0 or even 3-0 three, three oh in, in, right. in a best of seven, and your opponent just turns it on somehow. Turns it on. <laughs> 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 nice choice of words. Well, you know, with Hearthstone, anything can happen. And especially with the Yogg, he just clearly just... Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. His board just grew. There was like no cl like clears. 
like um, like no twisting nether, mm. um, no doom. It was just like it just worked out perfectly for him. Just only cleared his opponent's board. Yeah, I mean that that Fandral, um, Raven Idol earlier mm. gave him you know really good cards actually the Savage Roar and that Dragon Egg. Right. It actually mitigated a lot of the the Flame Waker's uh, fire pings. <laughs> It's just really funny, the dragon egg. Just like, it kept spawning little dragons. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the first kind of token druid variant that we had, like maybe like a year and a half ago, had dragon eggs in it. Not not with, this is before Yogg and stuff. Mm. But, um, I always thought that was the aggro druid. Yeah. Like I with guess the, it is. the Nerubian egg and then the yeah, dragon yeah, egg. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You just have a lot of, a lot of buffing cards for those, for those uh, minions. Hearthstone in the old days. Mm. I was a. Secret Pally player. Well, back when the Ancient of Lore <laughs> still drew two cards, you could just dump your hand and then be like, oh, get the draw cards, plus have a 5-5 five five on the field. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not going to happen anymore. It feels no. bad, man. But Fortunately for us. No. We got great new cards, actually. And I feel like the, me the meta is still not... Um, it's not really solid yet. Like, people no. are still discovering things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are still trying new things out. You know, like, I think... Like at the beginning of most expansions, people just play the old decks, but they put a f few new cards in. But I don't think enough people have really tried to to make just completely new deck archetypes, and that just takes a long time, you know, to develop a, a whole new deck concept, stuff yeah, like that. It takes a lot of work, actually, thinking of um, in, like creative decks. Mm. Sometimes people just sit back and relax and uh, wait for the pros to come up with the new. Right. <laughs> 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 Pretty much, just refreshing the the net deck websites. Like, come on, something <laughs> new. <laughs> So this is uh, game number four, and we're gonna see Edward Elric's uh, zoo. Uh, sorry, shaman. <laughs> yeah. Shaman, <laughs> and uh, versus the the zoo, right? Yeah. That's right. The normal zoo, Nook's no zoo. It's kind of funny now. We have to say like normal zoo, or or just maybe just say just zoo. Just zoo, yeah, and then discard zoo. Zoo and discard zoo. Got it. Edward is actually running two ancestral knowledges in his agro shaman. Quite old school, actually. It's like the um, older. Yeah. Agro shaman. We'll see if it if it works out for him this time around, because I'm not too sure of that that card choice. I mean, I'm sure he has a reason for it. Mm -hmm. um, might be might be good in certain matchups or something. Maybe he wants to try and keep up in in the, in the card draw with with maybe classes like warlock. Yeah, unfortunately, Nook style. Um, didn't really have anything except for the abusive to put out. But nah. Edward's um, Argent Squire could just easily take out the abusive mm. Argent. Perfect draw there. Gets the Totem Golem on turn two. He's going to coin out the Imp Gang boss. So he has something that just won't die instantly yeah. to the Totem Golem. But little does he know that the Flame Tongue is in the hand and yeah. will allow uh, the Totem Golem to, to clear the boss. And imp will pop up. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so he does decide to trade into it, make sh making sure that uh, uh, Nook Style doesn't have any minions on his board. Yeah, I mean, like abusive sergeant or some or a powerful Whelming would easily clear some of his minions. You just don't want to have that on the field. Right. Might as well get you know sack that one one, and you know pretty much ensure that your flame tongue stays mm -hmm. alive. Because in the end of the day, it is a one one. Right? Yeah, exactly. And like he does value his flame tongue totem a lot. He wants value for it. Yep. Dark Peddler. He's going to discover a card here. Hopefully something useful. Ooh. Goldshire Footman probably <laughs> indicates that the other two cards weren't that great yeah, either. Yeah. That's not the best choice, but... And, of course, we got the Tusker, which Tusker can high roll here, or maybe not. We'll see. What? That's not bad, but... I guess it doesn't really get the... All is fair in this world. <laughs> <laughs> For now. Well, actually, it's pretty good now that he does decide actually, to clear the peddler. Yeah, and it actually the healing totem is doing work. It's actually healing his minions. Yeah. But if that actually became a totem golem, well, that's kind of... That's always just better, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just... That's pretty much like a 6-6 six, six tusker. Right. 3 mana 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> right. Without overload as well. And then four four mana seven seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, so he's actually looks I was thinking about 
Should I play my Forbidden Ritual now? But with the healing totem on the field, oh, like, right, it's yeah, just it's all going to get cleared and healed back up. It's it's a little hard. Very Maybe awkward. he's considering uh, Knife Juggler into Forbidden Ritual. That's only two juggles, and it's pretty low chance that he hits, you know, that he kills anything with that. But Yeah, okay. it was a very, very awkward turn for Nuxa. Like, I, you're right. The Forbidden Ritual would have just, like, died there. Plus, with... Oh. Oh yeah, and the Doom Hammer on curve. Yeah, he's gonna be able to clear both those minions. And now he's gonna get all of his minions on board to swing to face. Massive turn here for Edward Elric. Yeah, this is actually, like, I think it's actually more favored towards the Shaman. Cause I mean, if, even if, like, Edward doesn't have his clear right now, but if he did, mm -hmm. it would've, it would just destroy a Forbidden Ritual. Right. Drawing the Doom Guard there, he has exactly five mana to play it. But is it worth discarding two cards? Yeah, and he's only going to be able to clear one minion on the board with it. I mean, what's the alternative? He taps and hopes for something better. But yeah, he's just going to go for it here. Takes a little risk. Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Would you just um, ignore this Doom Guard? Or, just, or do you actually you can just go face? Yeah. yeah, you go face. You have Doom Hammer already equipped, you know, you're going to be swinging for so much. Right. You draw something like a rock batter, it's game over, even if he clears the whole board. This makes makes it so that, like, he can't, like, if he just taps, then he's most likely dead. Yeah. I think he's most likely dead anyways. <laughs> he's definitely dead now. <laughs> I think Nuxal's just thinking it through. Is there any way for him to stay alive mm. here? He's going to tap. This is actually a very close battle between these two yeah. guys. Nookstyle definitely showing that, you know, he can, um, he's a player that um, can show that he's got some skill. Yeah, definitely putting up a good fight against mm -hmm. a little bit more established player. And so we, we are actually at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it's going to be the final match here. It's going to be the Temple Mage versus the Zulok here. Edward, looks like he's got a little cheeky smile on his face. He's feeling pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually the fifth match. Yeah, this is crazy when matches go up to the fifth match. It's like so close. Yeah, either player, the pressure's on, you know, especially on a big stage like this in front of, you know, the local crowd. It's uh, it's totally different from playing at home on ladder or whatever. It's just right. every match, just every game just takes so much more mental energy to, to get through. Uh, yeah, I know the feeling. Um, one time I was uh, playing Hearthstone on a stream where like thousands mm -hmm. of people were watching me. I made some misplays. <laughs> and it's just a lot of pressure. Just the right. way people are judging every single move that you make. It's tough, guys. You need to try it to fully understand what it's like. Sure. Mm. Have you been in any tournaments yourself? In Hearthstone? Mm -hmm. I played some fireside gatherings mm -hmm. in, in Australia. Those are really fun, though. Everyone just you know, has a few beers. Just it, It's super relaxed. <laughs> it's, it's nothing like this. Um, so I can't really compare. I, I did play some open bracket IEMs in, in StarCraft. Uh -huh. And that was uh, actually kind of nerve wracking because I'd have like really famous players sitting next to me in the open bracket. And like they'd look at my screen and I'm like, oh my God, they're judging my play, they're judging my play. <laughs> His <laughs> APM is so low. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I liked, I liked when um, you told TJ you played at a fireside. He was like, wow, a fireside boy in the flesh. <laughs> 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 they're really fun. Like everyone's super friendly. You just have a few drinks, play some Hearthstone, you know compete in like a little casual tournament. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. a lot of times there's a lot of, you know, free merchandise to be given away. I've actually been to one in the Philippines, yeah. but I wasn't playing. I just wanted mm. to watch and just like get the whole vibe. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely worth uh, going to sometime. Yeah, for sure. So, Temple Mage against Sulok. Yep. Do you think either's obviously favored in any way or I think it's going to be pretty even here? Mm. With my experience, I feel like the Tempo Mage has a maybe a slight advantage, mm -hmm. but I feel like yeah, I think it's yeah, it's pretty much kind of 50-50. But yeah, if you have like the Flame Waker and a lot of cheap spells lined up to kind of crush your opponent's board in that like turn five, yeah. four, five, six area, I think the Tempo Mage can really swing it in in their favor. But if you don't have that and the, mm -hmm. the Zoo Lock just keeps it is allowed to just keep growing their board, it's just it's pretty hard for the Tempo Mage to come back. That's true. And since we know Edward Elric's Tempo Mage, he doesn't run Flame Strike, right? No. So, yeah. 
um, with his Tempo Mage build, it might be not. It might. It's like slightly less, I guess. Favorable. Yeah, like he has to definitely have a board advantage before that. That right. You know, the seven mana area. And then he has the Tome, which is a slow card against right. Zoo. Right. And he has it in hand already, so that's not a good good start mm. at all. So yeah, I, I think Edward Elric's Tempo Mage build is um, is going to have a little bit of a hard time against the Zoo. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. That's a great start for Nook Style. You have the turn one, turn two, definitely on curve here. And then the Imp Gang boss to follow in turn three. But he's going to have to chip away at these <laughs> mirror images first. Yeah, nice move, move by uh, Elric to just throw those in between uh, his opponent's minions and whatever he was going to throw out. He already had the loot hoarder in hand. So he knew he wanted to, to protect that against, you know, those those cheaper one one minions. You know, you want you definitely want to trade upwards with these minions that he has. But moral coil from the dark peddler gets rid of that. Mm. Actually, that's actually kind of surprising that he he chose to take that path instead of put it dropping his imp gang. Mm, yeah. And um, I guess it's just gonna hold on to the abusive sergeant. It doesn't get any value here. And it most likely just dies to arcane missiles. Mm -hmm. But he's thinking about it for that uh, extra board presence, possibly. Mm -hmm. He's counting something over there. <laughs> 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 so um, we didn't actually see Edward Elric play his barns yet, have we? No, not yet. So, yeah, we did. It does tend to draw out some pretty good, good minions, though. Because a lot of your guys have, you know, spell power or card draw, things like that. Flame Waker, obviously, great. And I like that Edward is choosing to take out some of the, like, like, he chose the Peddler because it's got, like, 2 HP mm -hmm. health. Um, whereas the uh, Arcane Missiles could deal with these 1-1s one later with yeah. the, um, the Flame Waker. Yeah. That's the one. Man, <laughs> things are looking really good for, for Nook style here. Right. Turn 4, he has 4 minions on the board. If your opponent plays Barnes, what is it going to be? Oh, it's the Flame Waker. Oh, and he has Coin plus Arcane Missile, so this could be pretty good as long as it avoids oh, the, the Imp Gang boss here. Wow. Oh, hits the Imp Gang. Let's see where these uh, oh, go. Oh, these are pretty good. If he gets the 1-1s, one that would be really good. Uh, that's um, not what Edward wants. Uh, oh! Man, that started off really good, but... <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> right. Imp gang boss gets f gets maximum value. And he's uh, is he? He's holding on to his dire wolf here. Yes, so he's going to get rid of this barns. But that barn spawning the flame worker was actually the best. Right. The it best thing that could have happened for him. It hit the imp gang boss like three times. I mean that so wasn't great, but the, yeah. Yeah, but yes, it was a nice summon. Ooh. Slight desperation babbling book here. Mm -hmm. uh, effigy not really going to help him, though. But at least he can take out this dire wolf and just ping away at these little tokens. Yep. That's going to be 15 damage, if I'm correct, that Nuxtal has. Ten. But he's not going to... Oh, okay, no. He's going to go for it right now. Like He knows that um, Yogg is... Possibly coming yeah. up. Yeah, I think he also just really wanted to play the Doom Guard. He right. doesn't really care about throwing away the the ritual. the ritual, especially he already has you know a board advantage. Definitely, and he doesn't want to get rid of his um, throw away the power overwhelming, so might as well Ooh. just use it. Man, this could be it. It's lo it's so it's so, so close, close to the end for Edward here. Right, and all he, he can do here is just get rid of the Doom Guard. Yeah. Save five damage to his face. So that's three damage, tap to see what Nook style can get. Can he finish Edward right here, right oh, now? Oh, he got it. And there it is, Nook style, the local. He did get it. Yeah, the local open bracket player defeats the well-established right. Edward Elric. He goes down to the lower, bra lower bracket here. Still has a chance, though. Yep. I'll still be cheering for him. <laughs> Oh, that's right, your draft is out. Yeah, no. Well, well, not out, but yes, in the in the lower bracket. So uh, yeah. good luck to Edward down there. And super congratulations to Nookstyle. Uh, yeah. Slowly making making his way up there. Tie player. 
showing some skills and yeah i think it was just because uh edward's tempo mage was just a slightly different build not really that great against Zoo because like i said um no flame strike and the tome was just there actually sitting in his hand right he yeah. never got to play it it's a bit slow against um an aggro deck like Zoo. I mean, Nookstyle also got a great start, and he just continued right. to have the answers for what his opponent threw out there. Um, yeah, bad luck for Edward. Um, as I said, I'll still be cheering for him, my yeah. homeboy. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to the next few matches. Yeah, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll, we'll this, this. Oh, actually, I've got some. Uh, the voice in my head is telling me that we've, we've got <laughs> some replays. <laughs> of of the the series that we just saw. Let's. G it's probably the Yog replay. Oh yeah, for sure. That Yog was so clutch. Mm, What's well, another re possible replay? I mean that that Flame Waker turn was pretty big. Ooh. Yeah, this is the Yog turn here. This is great. This is a, such a good Yog. It's just going to keep summoning. This Lots cleave, right? Yep. Starts removing the cards. So yeah, again, we do see that Edward was still had the cabal and the barns yeah. just sitting in his hand. Oh, consecration to to top it all off. That's the cherry on top. Yeah. I mean, ball of spiders was exactly what Nook Styles wanted. You know, he just wanted bodies on, on the field. To enable that savage roar and power overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the here's the turn where he's just gonna show how much <laughs> damage he yeah. really has. At first, let me Raven Idol. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see Edward's face just he's shaking yeah. his head slightly. He's like, no, please, no, ah. But he's accepted <laughs> it. He's uh, there's a yeah. there's a slight grin like, okay, this is kind <laughs> of expected sometimes. The Yogg can do crazy things. Yeah. That was like an extra four damage, or did, yeah. Yeah. So this highlight is uh, when he taps and gets the Doom card. Yeah. <laughs> gets the exact card that he needed there to finish the game off. <laughs> and boom. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, Good pretty matches. exciting match. It went, it went the whole way. All five games were played. Mm -hmm. um, looks like we're probably going to be going, going to break here, but don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with some more Hearthstone action. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I maybe, maybe it's not on break yet. I think the production's on break before TJ us. TJ is 